The team which visited Maridi Diocese in October 2012 expressed a unique concept of mission across three continents. A threefold cord, the Diocese of Down and Dromore and Albany Diocese sharing together in mission with the church in South Sudan through CMS Ireland. During the visit, the team met many wonderful people and caught a glimpse of the enormous challenges facing the church in this brand new country. And, for the first time in the history of the link, all three bishops were together in Maridi. The people of Maridi Diocese have twice suffered as war and violence have invaded their lives. During the Civil War, the fighting came right into the diocesan compound, when it was rumoured that the cathedral was an armed store. Despite government bombing raids, the building remained intact, but evidence of those days remains. About 1,000 people in the diocese died during the war, but many more were injured, terrorised, and displaced. During the first war, this is where the Arab uh, troops came, dislodged the people, they burned this church off, and uh, by then, this is our youth leader, he had this parish, so he came to see the church, but unfortunately, uh, all the place around was uh, already mined, then he stepped on the landmine, then uh, he lost one of his legs. Then he was just left down there crying and then the Arab troops here, they couldn't. Uh, then later, by good luck, some people managed to come and then pick him and uh, went with him. Monica was just one of the thousands of people who fled to Congo. The good thing they did was that they saw us a place where refugees can be settled. But uh, this still could not make us feel good because we are in a foreign country. And the man damo le na hajatu ke tiral kan batal fi hayata na kasta ni na nswan ni na yan fakat iyalta na ke tir marujalta na o fi zaman dakde yan kul zoli tabli gozol ba amin fagoraba na majel bato kulu asan ni na fi Qatar. When peace finally came, a Ugandan rebel group called the LRA inflicted new and awful terrors on the southern parts of the diocese. Moving in small groups and surviving in the bush, they carried out random killings, mutilations and abductions. Yeah, my name is Amin Joseph. Uh, I have 29 years old. Uh, I'm staying in Meridi. I'm a Meridian. Uh, I just want to tell my story, what happened in me during uh, LRA come and attack us. In Meridi. Joseph was one of about 50 young singers and musicians who were practicing at the cathedral one day when a group of men came out of the bush shouting and firing guns. They tied us just here, uh, three in one rope, three in round rope, so we start to move. And when we are on the way, they told us now one of them. If he's been killing, uh, they, will, uh, they will kill 100 people. So, from there we fear. They say we have to go with them with a secret way up to the border of Congo. They will don't want to meet with the soldier of SPLA and UN police, and they don't want to meet with those people. Uh, from there we fear our life. 
we're reaching to the border. They got us all together. They say we are going to release you because for what good thing you did for us, uh, you protect us from what we told you people. And one of us does not get problem. And all of us have come successful. So they will release us. So this is what happened during LRA come and attack us in, in our place in Koya Group in Merid, 2006. Joseph made it home, but others weren't so fortunate, losing their lives, their freedom, their homes. At Kazana 1, just outside Maridi town, there are many displaced people. Bidal explains. All these people you see behind me, these people are victims of the LRA. Some of them lost their mother, their husband, their wife, their relatives. Some of them, their children were abducted, and up to now, we don't know what happened to them. Some people were killed in the village, and some were killed in the bush. They had to leave their place, their small crops, and their animals. And now they've come here to this displaced area. They come from many other parts. They have nowhere to go, and life has become very hard. They don't have enough land for cultivation, so they come to this church to pray, and that helps them. The church is trying to take care of them. As recently as two years ago, travel was forbidden on this road because of LRA activity. Today, the team is travelling 17 miles to Eddy Archdeaconry. Halfway there, they stop at a deserted settlement called Galilea. Two years back, the LRA came around uh, eight. Then they found the parish priest. He was uh, seated uh, near the fire with, uh, with his family. They came, then they shot him. They shot him? They shot him dead. Oh. Then uh, just beat the wife, take her somewhere and then left her. Then uh, the news reached me the following day. I came. Uh, with some soldiers, so we we buried the pastor here, just uh, near those two mango tree. We buried him there. Then after his funeral is when people decided to move away from here to leave the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but now you can see it as if there were no nobody here. It used to be highly populated. Arriving in Eddy, the Archdeacon and Parish Priest, Reverend Gabriel, leads a noisy and joyful welcome. There used to be 16 churches in Eddy Archdeaconry, but only nine are currently functioning. My name is Gabriel. I'm at Deacon of Eddy at Deaconry. Before uh, uh, LRA comes, there were 350 head of houses in Eddy. Uh, when LRA comes, some run away and leave only 55 heads of the house. Three years ago, I saw LRA came and uh, attack some people and kill some and take some go with them in the forest. And uh, uh, they beat some and leave them alive. That is what I saw and they took many uh, something like little children and they went with them. That is what I saw. People here, they are still fearing of LRAs. Because those there in Meridi, they are also fearing. They don't come here, they are staying there. Thankfully, the last LRA attack was in 2010, and there are signs of hope. 
in January 2010, the LRA came to this uh, place. They killed people and tortured many, abducted some. Then the whole area, about 10,000 people, fled to Meridi as displaced people. And about 2,000 from this place of Mbroko also went to displacement. They stayed for over a year. Then afterwards, when things were normalizing, they began to come back. Now they are now again cultivating in their gardens and the, the church here has started again.